السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. نحمده ونسلي على الرسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل على سيدنا ولانا محمد وعلى عال سل على سيدنا ولانا محمد وبارك سم سل عليه سلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله Last couple of weeks we were talking about Tawbah and uh, repentance uh, and of course Ramadan is coming uh, so we're going to start talking about Ramadan but this will really be more of a continuation of what we talked about uh, you know of course we know Ramadan first 10 days are Rahmah second 10 days are Maghfirah Rahmah uh, mercy and then second 10 days of forgiveness uh, and then the last days are itqum min nar or emancipation from the fire. <coughs> Mercy, forgiveness, and repentance, you know, these subjects, you can't separate them. They're all connected. Uh, so you really can't talk about one without the other. Uh, and so, you know, when we look at the verses in the Quran that deal with Ramadan directly, there are only six verses. Uh, which are verses 183 through 188 in Surah Baqarah. You know, the interesting thing though is that you know you think, okay, it's only six verses, you think they'd all came come down at once, but they didn't. You had the first three verses that came down initially, and then you had the second three verses that came down later. Uh, and in actuality, the first three verses came down second year of Hijri, uh, or second year after Rasulullah emigrated from Makkah to Medina Munawwara. Uh, which is the same year that the Battle of Badr took place in the month of Ramadan. Uh, so that is the year that fasting in Ramadan becomes an obligation. The second three verses didn't come down until the following year. Which, and they came down in a Ramadan. So when we look at these verses, starting off with 183, <laughs> That all you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, so that maybe you'll attain taqwa. You know, we're going to come back to what taqwa is, not today but later. Uh, but that is the purpose of fasting in Ramadan is to attain taqwa. So it's not a guarantee that if you fast you will get taqwa, but this is some this is this is a means to attaining taqwa. You know. The purpose of our coming here or the purpose of our being here is to um, become closer to Allah and His Messenger. <laughs> Knowledge is a means to do that. You know, unfortunately, this is why the Sufiya they say that al ilm al hijab al akbar, that knowledge is the greatest hijab, greatest veil. You know, because it blinds people. They think, oh, I know something now, and they lose sight of what the goal was. You know, the goal is to become closer to Allah and His Messenger. Fasting, the purpose of fasting is not to stay hungry and thirsty, but it's to attain taqwa. You know, so when we're fasting, we can't lose sight of what our objective is. The next verse, ayyamam ma'adudat. You know, Allah SWT says that, you know, for fasting for a pres prescribed period of time. Hmm? And then he goes on, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ You know, for those who are uh, sick or who are traveling, then they make up a period of time afterwards. And then, وَعَلَىٰ الَّذِينَ يُتِيقُونَ فِدْيَةٌ تَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ You know, and those who, for those who can't fast, then they should feed someone, you know, you know, as an emancipation for them, for themselves not fasting, is that they feed someone daily, every day they feed, feed some needy person, you know, since they're not fasting. So that's the emancipation for not fasting. 
And then the verse continues on. And, uh, you know, that, uh, and then the third verse, Shahru Ramadan. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudal linnasi fi bayyinatim min al-Huda wal furqan That, you know, this is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed, which is a guidance for mankind. And it goes on, where as far as guidance for mankind, as well as, you know, a criteria between right and wrong. And so for those who find this month, then they should fast. And I'm going to go because there's a lot to cover today, inshallah. And I want to get to the point. Uh, the, so just kind of go over the translation very quickly. So those who, you know, who find this month, they should fast. You know, and again, Allah Subhanahu repeats that if you know if you're sick or if you're traveling, then you make up. Uh, because Allah Subhanahu Wa does not want difficult. You know, He wants ease for you. He doesn't want to make things difficult for you. Yeah. So again, the purpose of fasting isn't to be hum become hungry and thirsty, and this is difficult for us. You know, the purpose was already stated before, but also in the end of this verse, Allah Subhanahu Wa says, you know, that you may gain gui uh, attain uh, guidance and be thankful. So all of these things are connected with fasting. You know, and as the month goes on, we'll, we'll come back to various subjects that, that I'm going to just kind of touch on today. So these first three verses were revealed second year of Hijri. Uh, if we look at the Quran, the Quran is different than any other book. All of the other books were revealed all at once. Whether it's the Torah, the Injil, the Gospels, the Zubur, the Psalms, or the booklets that were revealed to Ibrahim al-Islam or to various other prophets, all of them came down at once. Whereas the Qur'an, piece by piece. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Qur'an itself, in Surah Furqan, verse number 32. You know, where the disbelievers, they ask, or they say that why isn't this, why why isn't this Quran revealed all at once? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives the part of the answer in that in the end of that verse. And again, like I said, I'm going to come a lot of things we're going to be coming back to. But again, the Quran is different because when we look at the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala not only sent the text of the Quran, but He also sent the context of it, so that you that we understand not only what the words are. But we also understand the situation under which it's revealed, for whom it's revealed, what the conditions were, what, what, you know, what drove the revelation, and, and what it really means based on all of that. Yeah. The other thing that's different in the Quran, that's not in the other books, because the other books, had, they came down all at once, so you have the book and that's it. Yeah. There is no law of abrogation in the older text. If it comes down all at once, how can you abrogate anything? Rasulullah Sallallahu came with the message, he also, but he also came to abrogate various other things before him. And Osmata mentions this in the Quran itself again, in Surah Baqarah, verse 106. You know, that we... Uh, you know, we abrogate some of those verses from this. But we replace it with something that is of equal or better. Something better or something similar. And then he says uh, that, and don't you know that Allah has uh, control over everything, over all things. This is his authority. But of course, even what he abrogates, he already knows what's he going, what he's going to abrogate. And sometimes when the verses come, they one verse will abrogate a, another verse entirely. Other aspects, a verse will come and only abrogate a portion of a verse. So again, the first verse of Ramadan, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum as-siyamu, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattakoon. That, O oh, you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you, the same way as it was prescribed for those before you. So you fast the same way that they fasted. But the interesting thing is that today we don't fast like they fasted. 
If you look at how they fasted, what the order for fasting for them was, fasting ended at Maghrib. Just like our fast ends at Maghrib. Sun sets, we break our fast. But for them, fasting started, if they went to sleep after Maghrib and they woke up, fasting started. There was no suhoor. You know, like we get up before dawn and we, get, and we go and eat and drink. There was nothing like this for them. You know? So if somebody went to sleep, you know, 10 o'clock at night, and Fajr isn't until 6 o'clock in the morning. And 2 o'clock in the morning, he gets up because he's got to go to the bathroom. His fasting started. But we don't fast that way. So what, is, what, what triggered the difference? And in reality, what triggered the second three verses to come down? And what happened is that Umar, one night after Salat in the Masjid, he goes home. It's Ramadan. Second, this is the second year that Ramadan is an obligation. So second year of Hijri, obligation came. Third year of Hijri, now this happens. Umar Radiyan goes home and his wife was sleeping, but when he entered the house, <coughs> she woke up. He approached her and she says, look, I'm fasting. You know, my fast just started. Because I, I've, had, I've fallen asleep and now I've woken up, so my fast has started. Min qablikum, like, it's, like it was for the pe previous nations. Omar Radion didn't stop. And then the next morning he comes running to Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Rasulullah, I have destroyed myself. This happened and I have destroyed myself. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi doesn't say anything. I mean, if he wanted to, he could have raised his hands and said, oh, Ya Allah, forgive Umar. And Allah SWT would have forgiven him. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't say anything. And now the verses come. وَإِذَا سَلَكَ عَبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِي ذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّكُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ We'll go over the translation of this in a, in a second. But then the next verse. أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةُ السِّيَامِ Lawful for you on the nights of fasting. And the verse continues on, you know, about approaching your wives and all that. And then also, you know, the continuation, in the continuation of the verse, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا You know, eat and drink. When? حتى يبين لكم من من الخيط الأسود أسود من الخيط من الخيط من الخيط الأبيض من من حتى حتى يبين لكم خيط خيط الأس خيط الأبيض من الخيط من الخيط الأسود من الفجر you know, until the, the white thread of dawn is distinct from the back black thread of dawn. So this is your cutoff point. Okay. So this changes how we fast compared to the previous nations. But that first verse, which is, you know, a verse that we, in the first khutbah here, almost every time we recite that verse. وَإِذَا سَلَكَ عَيْبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعَيْ ذَا دَعَانٍ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّكُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And when my slaves or when you are asked by my slaves about me فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ then I am close. You know, I listen to their prayer, to their supplication when they ask. So they should believe in me. They should obey me and believe in me. And they should be thankful. و 
wa idha salaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb when my slave when you are asked by my slaves about me then i am close which is interesting because there are certain groups that use this verse to say oh see we don't need to go to the messenger we just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala direct. See yeah, he says so. If I look at the shine in Nuzul, why the verse was revealed, when Omar radio did this, where did he go? He didn't stay at home and ask, Allah, Allah, forgive me. He goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa this is what I've done. The interesting thing is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa could have simply asked Allah, forgive him. But he didn't. Because this was Omar. And when Omar has done something like this, how many other people have done the same thing and didn't come forward? And Rasulullah so some silence on this becomes a mercy to the whole Ummah. Because how many people had already done it and how many people would be doing the same thing later on? So rahmatul alameen, silence is also rahmah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The silence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also a mercy to all of creation. So he didn't say anything. Because he also knows the verses are coming. So if I look at it even from this standpoint. You know, as to why the verses were revealed, it doesn't, their explanation of it doesn't fit. Because Omar radiya, where does he go when, when this happens? He goes to the Messenger. But even if I look at the wording of the verse itself, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي When and when you are asked by my slaves, Anni, about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ Then I am. Close. You know, if you look at language, you have, you know, when, and then you have then. When you have when and then together, then the then part doesn't occur until the when has happened. You know, like, like if I'm teaching someone to shoot. I say, when, when the target is in your sights, pull the trigger. Well, if they say, oh, see, he said pull the trigger. I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm never going to hit the target. Hmm? Parent tells the child, when you finish your food, then you can have dessert. Hmm? Child says, oh, I can have dessert. I don't need to finish my food. See, he said, he said then I can have dessert. It's then. Yeah. The then is tied with the wind. So in order for the, de the then aspect of the statement to be true, you have to fulfill the first part of the statement. When you do this, then this. And the statement is, وَإِذَا سَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَلِّي When my, when my servants ask you, when they come to you, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Then I am close. Which is interesting because I was listening to one guy, he was trying to explain this, and he says, oh, see, in language, you know, if somebody says, when you ask, you know, what should have been said, is, when they ask you, then tell them this. So see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so eager for us to, to, to ask that he even say, tell them. He, he omitted that part. You know, because he's in such a rush, you know, that we should, we should ask him directly without going to the messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, if that's true, then there shouldn't be a fa in there either. He says fa inni. He should have simply said, said inni. You know, he shouldn't even said the then. The statement, if, if that's true, the statement should only be when my when my slaves ask you, I am close. But he doesn't say that. He says when they ask you, then I am close. Which goes along with all the other verses we've been talking about. And 
And when they had wronged their own selves, they had come to you, my beloved. <coughs> Again, you know, if you want forgiveness, where do you go? You go to the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent as his mercy. Because there is no forgiveness if there is no mercy. I mean, it's, it's fairly simple. But people take this and then they want to make it say something that it doesn't say. But again, if you look at the Shahin ibn Zul, why was it revealed? What were the circumstances under which it was revealed? What happens? Omar Radiyan does, does this thing. And what, is, what does he do? He comes running to Rasulullah. And because of Allah's love for Rasulullah and Rasulullah's love for Omar and love for the whole Ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't simply forgive Omar. He changes the rule for everybody. That now the way you fast is not like the previous nations fasting. So that min qablikum has been abrogated as far as application. But the wording is still there so that we know that we appreciate the mercy of Allah we appreciate that we are given such a beautiful messenger as Rasulullah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of him changes, changes the rules for this ummah that it becomes easier for us so and I mean just this I mean if we could just understand this much but again, this is all connected with what we talked about last two weeks. When we go to the messenger, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close. If we say, oh no, I don't need to go to the messenger. I can go direct. Again, you know, if we, even when we look at the example of Omar, if he had done that, what would have happened? Nothing. Because he did what he did, not only was he forgiven, you have verse, verses of the Qur'an being revealed in his honor. <coughs> All because he connected himself to Rasulullah. <laughs> so again, you know, this re-emphasizes the point that there is no forgiveness without the wasila of Rasulullah. And it doesn't matter who you are. Whether you are a prophet like Adam salam, or a sahabi like Umar radiallahu or a common man like ourselves, or actually in reality even less than that, that for ourselves. The only way to attain forgiveness is through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who again is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, you know, this month, as I said, you know, Ramadan is coming. Even when we start talking about taqwa. True taqwa is again the connection with Rasulullah. So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that directly in the Quran itself. You know, Surah Hujrat, read the Surah. You know, so that way it makes it easier when we talk about it. The Quran. I mean, you know, we, we, we read the Qur'an, which is Qur'an is Samit, which is the silent Qur'an. You know, which is interesting because when uh, Ali, when he went to deal with the Khawarij, you know, the Khawarij, again, these, are, this is, these people were very well versed. Most of them were Hafiz of Qur'an, scholars of the time. And their hymns of the Qur'an, I mean, they could pull out verses like this. You know, Hajjaj is actually one of them. I mean, if you look at his, his mindset, it, it was very similar. Hajjaj bin Yusuf. He was also Hafiz of Quran. People think that he's the one who did put the diacritical marks in the Quran as far as the Fatah and you know, Zabarzer and Pesh or the Fatah Dhamma Kasra, but he's not. He took credit for it. Uh, 
The actual person who did that was Abu Asad al-Duhli, rahmatullahi who's one of the students of Sayyidina Ali, karamallahu and he did this under the orders of Ali to find a way to make sure that the reading is not changed. He did it later, but he did it under the order of Ali, radiallahu anhu. You know, but Hajjaj, you know, a woman came to him and she mentioned something about a certain word, and I'm blanking on the word right now, not being in the first 15 Jews of the Quran, but being only in the last 15 Jews. And he told her right then, he said, if you're lying, I'm going to chop your head off right now. And he goes through the whole, you know, he, he, he starts thinking, and he says, after a while, he says, yeah, you're right. I mean, this is how strong their hips was. But they had no iman. And so Ali Radun, when he says, was talking to them one time, he says that, you know, you recite to me from Quran and Samit, from the silent Quran. It can't tell you what it really means. I am telling you from Quran and Natiq, from the walking, talking, living Quran, what this really means. Who is? Rasulullah. So Rasulullah is not only the message. You know, again, you know, I feel like a broken record sometimes saying the same thing over and over again. But, but if, if we understand these basic points and everything else starts falling into place and becomes easier to understand. The Rasulullah is not only the messenger that he brought us the message. You know, people say, oh, Jibreel taught him. Astaghfirullah. You know? And we'll go over that as well later, inshallah. Uh, not today, but, but later. But he's not only the messenger who brought the message. In reality, he is the message. And a simple example is when Aisha Siddiqa Radin was asked about, about his character. And what did she say? Quran. His character is the Quran. And it doesn't mean like some people try to interpret, oh, you know, that uh, the verses came and then he did according to that. If you look at many verses, the many of the verses came according to him. According to what he did. And then Osmanta reveals the verse afterwards. And he is also the explanation to that message. So he is the messenger who brought the Quran, but in reality he is the living, breathing, talking Quran. And he is also the explanation to that Quran. And if we choose to go other places, and if we choose to leave him to find some other explanation, or if we choose to say that, oh, I don't need to go to him for Allah's forgiveness, I can just ask Allah subhanahu wa directly. Then that is not in accordance with the message, message, nor the messenger, or the explanation to that messenger. Sallallahu So yes, Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. But who is the Qur'an? So this is the month to attain taqwa, and that's the purpose of Ramadan. But again, as I said, inshallah, we'll start talking about this next week. Uh, Surah Hujrat, Surah 49, Surah number 49. Yeah, so read it. Uh Allah subhanahu wa mentions whose hearts he has certified for taqwa. You know, it's one thing for somebody, I see somebody, oh yeah, he's very pious and righteous and he has taqwa. Who am I to say that? But when, and it's another thing to some, for somebody to simply, you know, kind of act as he has taqwa, but it's a totally different issue when Allah subhanahu wa certifies somebody that, oh, this is the one who has taqwa. And that's mentioned in Surah Hujrat as to whose hearts he has certified for this. So read that, inshallah, we'll start going over that next week. But, you know, next few weeks we'll be talking about Ramadan. Uh, and then after Ramadan, inshallah, we'll start talking about the Hajj. Uh, since there are some people from this community who have intention of going on Hajj, inshallah. So we'll start talking about uh, this year, inshallah. So we'll see if that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll start talking about the Hajj, the Hajj of Rasulullah Sussum, and, and all the other aspects mm -hmm. of Hajj after that, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So may Allah SWT guide us. Uh, you know, fill our hearts with his true love and the true love of his beloved Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all of those whom they love, inshallah.